Hello and welcome to the Flourishing Introvert Talks with me, Joe Rawbone. This is the podcast that celebrates the natural gifts of introverts so that we can flourish in all situations. Episode 211. Can you see the I in team? If you've spent any time in an organisational office, you'll no doubt have seen the motivational posters, including the one that says there's no I in team. And I understand the premise of this saying, as it's about not just looking after number one, but keeping the success of the whole team in your sights. And I've also found that saying wanting for some time, and it wasn't until my team nudged me to delve a little deeper that I uncovered my own perspective. And here it is. Ready? If there's no I in team, maybe I've lost my right to individuality and feel obliged somehow to conform, just like I did for all those years. So ever the disruptor, I'm here to encourage more of us to look at the notion of an effective team through a different lens. In this episode then, I'm making a case for recognising all of the eyes that make the team work so brilliantly. Somehow, in our relentless pursuit of effective team working, we risk overlooking a crucial aspect of human dynamics, individuality. Each member of a team brings a unique set of skills, perspectives and experiences to the table And it's time we recognise and celebrate each of the I's in our teams. That's what diversity, equity, inclusion and belonging is all about, which makes it even more worrying that some organisations are culling their strategic DEI leadership posts. And it's not because they have it all sorted, but because it's considered an easy cost saving. As a reminder, an effective team is not made of individuals who conform to some notion of a glorified or rarefied ideal. The team members are empowered to be themselves and play to their own strengths. It is this very diversity which, when valued, is more likely to produce a high-performing team. Because the reality, as I see it, is that a high-performing team consists of high-performing individuals. How do individuals reach that high-performance status? By playing to their strengths and experiencing learner safety. In the realm of teamwork and collaboration, there's a pervasive notion that unity and cohesion are paramount. In fact, I've worked with fairly senior people in organisations just recently who do not feel safe enough to disagree, to challenge or to present a contrary perspective. That's shocking. And why? Because we've been led to believe that if we're committed to the team and its purpose, we need to let go of our individual identities for the collective good like that's the only way to perform successfully, akin to the cogs in a well-oiled machine. Let's think through that analogy for a moment though. Cogs in a machine are of different sizes, with different tolerances, and positioned in ways that make the whole work. They are not identical or all moving in unison. They have their own role and rhythm and are cleverly designed to fit and work together for the smooth running of the machine. So there are real dangers of homogenisation where we allow affinity bias to reduce the richness of diversity within the team. And yet, affinity bias is often subconscious and goes unchallenged. Professor Amy Edmondson shares a quote from Abraham Lincoln in her TED Talk about teaming. Lincoln is quoted as saying, I don't like that man. I must get to know him better. (laughs) 
how many of us honestly take that approach? I suggest that for many of us, that quote would sound more like, I don't like that man, I must avoid him. What would it take for you to notice your judgment, get curious and explore your differences with someone? You see, a team of people selected or coached to mirror the same traits, opinions and behaviours might on the surface seem like a recipe for harmony and efficiency. After all, wouldn't it be easier if everyone thought alike, acted alike and spoke alike? But all it's doing is creating an echo chamber of mini-me's and beneath the facade of uniformity lies a sad and dangerous truth. Homogenisation stifles innovation, creativity and critical thinking. If groupthink sets in, the team becomes susceptible to tunnel vision, unable to explore alternative solutions or anticipate potential pitfalls. In such an environment, innovation withers, creativity languishes and progress stagnates. Where are the dissenting voices? Where is the safe space for divergent perspectives? Remember what Winston Churchill said, kites rise highest against the wind, not with it. So we need some opposition in order to really soar. Both the fabric of our teams and their success are enriched by infusing them with a breadth of insights and approaches. By neglecting individuality in favour of conformity, we squander the opportunity to harness this diversity and tap into its transformative potential. But, and I know this is a big but, it takes a remarkable leader or manager to harness this diversity for good. Too many managers and leaders want an easy life and the illusion is that this is provided by surrounding themselves with identikits. So, not that I really need to remind you, but here's the kicker for we introverts. In too many organisations, there exists the myth of the ideal team player. The idealised archetype of the perfect team player is someone who is selfless, sociable and always willing to put the team's needs above their own. While these qualities certainly have their merit, they shouldn't come at the expense of individual autonomy and authenticity. It's the pressure to conform to this ideal that can be suffocating as it attempts to coerce team members into suppressing their true selves in favour of some sanitised persona, one which is deemed acceptable by the group and manageable by the leadership team. This erodes the psychological safety, the morale and the self-esteem of we introverts as it compounds the notion that we're unacceptably different and are therefore not enough in some way. Worse than that, this pursuit of the ideal team player often overlooks the unique strengths and contributions that each individual, each I, brings to the table. So what's the answer, I hear you cry? Well, contrary to popular belief, embracing individuality within teams isn't a recipe for chaos or discord. Rather, it's a catalyst for innovation, growth and resilience. When team members are encouraged to express their authentic selves, it fosters a culture of trust, of respect and psychological safety, which is a fertile ground in which collaboration and creativity flourish. By bringing together individuals with varied backgrounds, perspectives and skill sets, teams are able to tackle complex problems from multiple angles, uncovering insights and opportunities that might otherwise go unnoticed. So, In enlightened organisations, inclusive diversity isn't just a flavour of the month saying, it's a driving force behind innovation. Research has consistently shown that 
diverse teams outperform homogenous ones, solving problems more effectively and generating a wider range of ideas. By embracing individuality and creating space for diverse voices to be heard, organisations can unlock untapped reservoirs of creativity, ingenuity and ultimately potential. Easier said than done though. As previously mentioned, the courage and foresight to enable and value individuality within teams requires more than just lip service. It necessitates a fundamental shift in leadership philosophy and organisational culture. Inclusive leadership, characterised by humility, empathy and openness, lays the groundwork for fostering an environment where every voice is valued and every perspective is respected. Inclusive leaders recognise that diversity isn't just a tick box exercise or a quota to be filled. It's a strategic imperative. These leaders actively seek out diverse perspectives, solicit feedback from all team members and create opportunities for everyone to contribute their unique insights and talents. By modelling inclusive behaviour and championing diversity at every level of the organisation, inclusive leaders set the tone for a culture of belonging and innovation. Moreover, inclusive leaders understand that true inclusivity extends beyond the surface level diversity to encompass diversity of thought, of experience and of perspective. They recognise that innovation thrives on dissent and disagreement, so they won't shut down conflict, but encourage constructive disagreements as a means of driving progress and innovation. So if you're a leader, invite, welcome and embrace the full range of diversity within your teams. Just because someone lives a different lifestyle doesn't mean they can't add value to your team. Just think of the different perspectives and life experiences they bring to the party. Model inclusive leadership by giving a chance to people that you'd normally rule out without giving them a second thought or a glance. I can't tell you how many case studies I have of people who were judged not acceptable and for a range of reasons. And now they've found organisations that genuinely value diversity and encourage them to be themselves. What's more, they are some of the most loyal and committed team members that I know, consistently going above and beyond. If you build a team of people just like you, where is the growth? Where's the real diversity? What are you modelling? I challenge you to look beyond your stereotype of a team member who would fit in and look for people who can fit together and help broaden each other's outlook. And if you're an introvert with your eyes on a leadership role, remember that owning, articulating and playing to your strengths when all around you are conforming is an act of positive rebellion. Advocating for those who are different is also an act of rebellion, which I applaud as we have much to learn from each other. So I invite you to make a stand for who you really are and prepare to reason as to why success starts with all of the unique and remarkable eyes in any team being able to be fully themselves without fear of judgment punishment or ridicule. So the reality is there are as many eyes in a team as there are team members. If you enjoyed this episode as much as I did, then please subscribe, rate us and leave a comment because we know that that helps other people find the podcast. And if other people find us, other introverts can flourish.